Looks, Mike, it looks like it's you and I on again. Mike, what happened to your golf game? Um, we ended up playing. We won. We're champions. Ah, good. I just got just got home. I'm trying to. My computer crapped out. I had to get that fixed. I just got it back late today, so I I got to try to print out an agenda here. I usually do that long before this, but I uh, as a, the guides would have it there. Uh, I'm still trying to how to figure out to put my picture. On my account, I've got the picture, but for some reason, it doesn't show up on this thing. Hey, Christina. Hello. We can't vote for you, Christina, because we want you on EDC. <laughs> hey, you know what happens in the in the poll in the poll place or at the ballot box, you know, stays a secret. So you do what you have to do. <laughs> well, you're too good for both things. That's the problem. So <laughs> we'll, we'll send you to where you want to be. <laughs> well, that's nice of you to say, thank you. I'm trying to pull a couple of reports from the Google Analytics to share with you guys. I think you both saw my uh, post about my uh, crab apple tree. Mm, mm -hmm. It's really weird. It's the, uh, the the stupid tree dropped all of its leaves last month. Then it, it leaved back on again. And I didn't get, get it at its at peak when I took the picture, but it actually was in full blossom. So yeah. in, in September, no less. I guess it's, uh, I mean, it has been quite warm. I mean, my kids, we closed our pool this weekend. We have an above ground pool and they were swimming on Saturday, which is unheard of to swim this late into September. I was swimming in the lake up in New Hampshire this weekend. It was gorgeous. Uh -huh. Actually, water skiing. How's everybody doing good? Just fine. Getting ready to set a date for my back surgery. How Which, long does that usually lay you up when you have them did? This one's going to be more severe because this one's fusion. So uh, right now it's looking like the middle of uh, next month. And they say I probably be in the hospital three or four days. Then it's a, uh, it, and I, it, when I had just the uh, oper operation for the spinal stenosis, I was basically able to walk the next day. So this th this one's going to be a little bit longer. They they're saying. Good luck with it. Well. <clears throat> I was talking with one of our RTC colleagues that was trying to give me advice on what I should and shouldn't do. But uh, it basically, my son has been telling me, who's a doctor too, he says, Dad, there's not much you're going to do. I mean, you're going to have to have something done. Because it's uh, got to the point where 
literally I can't do much of anything except to go from one chair to the next chair. I played golf this weekend with my um, fraternity brothers from college. It's our 37, 37th consecutive year. Huh. And on the first tee, we played 18 for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The first tee off Friday, I wrenched my back. So I, I basically struggled through Friday and took some muscle relaxants, among other things, Friday night and was able to get through the rest of the weekend. But it was just a horrible feeling when you do that to your back on the first shot of a long weekend. Ooh. Well, you know, if, if this was just muscles, it would be one thing. But I've got two uh, bulging discs that are uh, impinging right on the uh, nerve roots. So basically there's uh, no strength in, in my legs when those things, you know, start, you know, uh, inflaming. And there's no type of ther therapy that can relieve them at all? I, I had, uh, af after the sur surgery I had in February, I had three and a half months of physical therapy, including traction. And the physical therapist, which I respect a lot, said, there's nothing much I can do about this. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a physical thing. The, uh, uh, the spine is kind of collapsing because of arthritis. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the discs are, are not as, as uh, occupying the same space they were. So they're just bulging and uh, pushing on the nerve root. So as a result, there's just uh, no strength in the legs and uh, kind of a numbness and uh, weakness in the legs. So, you know, when I w wake up in the morning, I, I'm okay for the first hour or so, but then it just goes downhill after that. You haven't got osteoporosis as well, do you? No, I don't have that. Uh, it's just arthritis uh, in the spine because I, I, I've been tested for the osteoporosis because my mother had that. And you know that that is basically the degeneration of the bone itself. So I, I don't have a problem of the de uh, degeneration of the bone. I just have a whole bunch of arthritic bone spurs and other things that cause uh, impingement on the nerves. So uh, injuries when you were younger, or just it, it? I get arthritis in the family, uh, and uh, they're going to go in instead of through the back, they're gonna go in through my side and they're going to pull out two of the, of the discs and put in these spacers and the spacers kind of attached to the bones. And then they're gonna put this artificial bone mm. around everything. So uh, wow. then I gotta wear a corset for a little while to let all that heal. And then the Hopefully that when that heals, it'll be strong enough. Uh, the surgeon is not super, he, he thinks this may s solve the problem, but he's also, also scheduled a second surgery in two months that would be a much more extensive spinal fusion that would basically fuse the entire lumbar area. So I won't, I won't be doing any, any, uh, yoga exercises for a while. <laughs> Any water skiing either. No. Well, you know, uh, there, there are, you know, situations where they can just pull a miracle out of a hat. My father uh, uh, has uh, lung cancer and he, the reason he found out that he had it is because it had spread to his back and he had back pain and nerve pain. And so they went in like this uh, It's almost two years ago now and actually removed vertebrae from his back, his thoracic spine and put in rods. And uh, I mean, I just thought like, well, this is it. Like how, he's not going to come back from this. Like it just sounded insane. It sounded like science fiction, um, but he's walking around and playing golf. So good for him. You know, they can do amazing things nowadays. Well, if I can end up playing golf after this, it'll be great. Yeah, <laughs> I'll keep yeah. my fingers crossed for you. 
Well, considering the fact that I've never played golf in my life. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe bowling? <laughs> yeah. well, uh, I've been playing for almost 40 years, Dick, and some people say it looks like I've never played golf either someday. So <laughs> it's just, that's just the nature of the game. My, yeah. my, my wife is the golf player. She was uh, <clears throat> doing all of her schmoozing and stuff when she was in marketing. Mm -hmm. So all the, all the uh, uh, marketing was, was done on the golf course. Oh, Dick, don't get me wrong. If I'm having a, a good a good game and I played a little bit, I can shoot in the, the mid-80s, which is you can golf with anybody if you hit that kind of score. But if I don't play, I'll be up around 100, which, you know, it's still kind of bogey golf, but you'd like to be better, you know, if you're competitive. Hey, Richard, um, I got a, a text from uh, Margaret. She's going to be at, stuck at work until about 8.30. Oh. She just wanted me to convey that she has a, somebody who might could be an alternate to the EDC so and I have to be off this meeting at 8 30 Dick okay oh so do we we don't have a quorum yet do we we've got fire is here we're, we're lacking Good one uh, Margaret had asked why we couldn't have the meeting in uh, Knowlton Hall and I did some check-in on that. And the reason we can't is that we had voted for having a virtual meeting, and a, a hybrid meeting, and the uh, town has yet to come up with a way to record any meetings that are held, you know, quasi-virtual. So, uh, you know, the only two options are to have a total in-person meeting, which we had voted not to do, and or to have the total Zoom meeting. So we're kind of stuck with the Zoom meeting, which <clears throat> it, it basically puts us at a disadvantage because Terry Wakeman, uh, Ray Finn and Gary Lawrence have told me that uh, they have no intention of attending any Zoom meetings. So that puts three of our uh, people, you know, not attending at all. So we really can't afford to lose anyone, I think. Uh, the only one we've got to, to hope, hopefully complete the thing is Margaret. So. Uh, but not till 30. So <laughs> Dick, how is it that the Board of Education is having hybrid meetings and recording them? Uh, I think they've set, must have set something up at the school. I think they have the capabilities in the conference room at the school to do that. Yeah. But there why is, can't the town have the same technology? They're working uh, on it. They're working on it? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't uh, they call the school? Sorry, I, I realize <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking obvious questions that we know the answer to, but come on. <laughs> well, if this if the They're school terrible. if the school is open and available, you could ask to have meetings there and, and do it that way. Well, right. you don't want to have meetings in the school right now with the number of COVID cases in the school. But that's another story. Yeah, I, I have I, I've had a call into uh, Catherine and have not got her, but I spoke to uh, the person who's really in charge, Christine. And Christine's told me, just uh, sit tight and uh, we'll eventually get it solved. So how many how many cases of COVID in the school? I think it's up to like 13 or 15 at this point. Kids Which, and teachers or? What's that? Kids and teachers or? I think it's mostly in kids. It's hitting the elementary school population really, really hard because those that's the, least, that's the most vulnerable population that can't be vaccinated right now. And so uh, the schools had about 13 cases. There's parents saying that their kid got it at school, which did not happen last year at all. Um, it's not a good situation right now. Well, are the kids uh, heavily symptomatic or they just testing positive? There's a little girl I know who's very sick. And I will tell you my, my grandson who's 15 got it back in January and he's under doctor's uh, observation because he was out of school for a while, he's got, he's got uh, what they call the long hauler symptoms. He's got issues with his heart. So it's pretty serious. Yeah. 
he had, he yeah. had cognitive issues and um, you know all kinds of other issues <clears throat> for about two months. <clears throat> but he's got a heart issue. They're following. They're hoping that he'll get up. He'll out kind of. It'll go away in like another six months. But it's pretty scary. Very scary. All of my, uh, uh, with the one exception, all of my grandkids are mm -hmm. over twelve. So they, they've all had the, the uh, vaccine. So uh, knock on woods, nothing's happened with any of them. Yeah, unfortunately my kids are under 12. And so I'm- Hang in there. Buying better masks and yelling at the superintendent and uh, <laughs> hoping for the best. Uh, I, I don't think we're gonna have a full meeting. Um, why don't we talk a bit since we've got Christina on? Uh, I had put up the uh, link for the posting for the uh, Westwood Hill distilleries, and that's got quite a few hits. Uh, the one for uh, the host listeners, Archard, also got quite a quite a few hits and, mm -hmm. and comments. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, how many more do we have in the, in the hopper now, Christina? Um, a lot. Uh, hold on one second. Let me look it up. I don't retain numbers. I, I, I always have to look them up. Let's see. Featured stories. So we have the new owners at Smitty's in October, Antero Healthcare in November, and Toolmax in December. So that's three. Yeah. Um, and so I can, if you want me to reach out to a few more to try to get something for January, February. Yeah, I, I, I think as we talked before, uh, you can just kind of like, uh, let me know of what you spent. And when you get to a certain point, we'll send us a bill and we'll put it through for payment. But uh, right right now, I, I think we'd like to keep on going, you know, having these in the hopper for the next uh, four to six months. Okay, so yeah, if I do, if I do two more, then you'll have five. So have, have we done uh, Antero? The uh, yeah, uh, we've done them. Yep. Uh, what about Hope and Wellness? No, I haven't done Hope and Wellness. No, I could reach out to them. I, I think they would be a good one to do. Uh, yep. Uh, we haven't done Brian Savulis and company for for a long time. That's, Is that Yagel? Uh, that's Yagel. Okay, I can reach out to them. And uh, I guess you could do Terry's transmissions. We haven't done that yep. one. Yeah, we could do Terry's, yeah. And uh, trying to think who else we have. The, the, what is the name of the Bayloff's uh, tree Bayfield. service? Mansfield Tree Service. It's called Mansfield. Okay. Yeah, Mansfield Tree Service. Yep. I, unfortunately, we kind of backed off that one because it was called Mansfield on the yeah. on the brochure. <laughs> I don't know why they called it Mansfield instead of Ashford Tree Service or something. I don't know if they originally lived in Mansfield. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. What about um wooden spoon? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yep. I know they're struggling with the whole mask thing. They, they're having some uh, customer issues. Yeah, did you hear yeah. that? Uh, were you on that meeting? Uh, with I, regard to the gun problems at uh, Selectman's meeting two weeks ago? No. I, I listened to about half of it. Uh, it was kind of like uh, watching paint dry. It was worse uh, than that. But they, they the um, what's his name? Mark did put on a plea with regard to people coming to the door and re refusing to put masks on and lifting their shirt up and showing guns saying, you're not going to keep me out, which that gets a little, that gets a little bit spooky. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, 
this whole mask mandate thing, uh, going in and out of, uh, you know, stores, half the people in stores are not wearing a mask. I mean, if, if you go into the price right, people are wearing masks there. But if you look at the students walking up and down the street, you know, uh, most of them are not wearing masks. And when you leave the car to walk into a restaurant, as soon as you get in the restaurant, you take the mask off. So I, I'm not sure what the big problem is for the wooden spoon, because it's not like anyone's really exposed to anything while they're just walking in the door. You know, it's a... Too many, too, too many subjectives there. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we've tried, I, I, I've, we've tried to patronize them, but I found that they're, they're pretty, like when we tried to order takeout and, and he said, you've got to tell me exactly what time and I'll tell you what time you can come pick it up. There's, there's no like, we'll call it and it'll be ready in 20 minutes or so. You've got to schedule a time that you can pick up the order. It's, it's a, it doesn't, he doesn't make it really easy to do business with him. Why, why would that have to be employed when you're calling in as takeout? I know, I'm just telling him, you get really indignant when I, I called in to get a takeout and he says, okay, these are the slots you can get it. And they were like an hour and a half in the future. And I said, well, why is it so like, well, it, it takes me time to prepare everything and I can't be having too many things backed up. So I says, okay, we won't bother to get a take on from you. <laughs> but if he's good, oh, never mind. It's not, it's not even worth the bidding. No, I mean, uh, it, it does seem like he's making it difficult to, to do business with him, which is too bad. Uh, we don't have... We have so little in town, you know. To, uh, well, who's left? Him in the midway, right? I mean, that yeah, it? that's it. How's, how's, midway, how's Midway's business? We don't frequent them that often, so I don't know. We, we used to go. I haven't there. eaten inside a restaurant since March 2020, so I can't tell you. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> We, we haven't been to Midway for ever. Last time we went there was a year, year and a half ago. And uh, the food was horrible. The service was horrible. And uh, we kind of decided, you know, not, not, not to go back again. And this was even before the COVID thing had hit. That's where we've kind of always been. But you know where you might try is um, the Hilltop. You get a fairly nice meal there. Yeah, we... We went there to their outdoor patio uh, yeah. a while back, and it was pretty socially distanced there. And you get a fairly nice meal. Yeah. I can give you an update on um, our friend uh, Mark Pensa in the old sneakers building. That um, he's still working with um, a restaurant, whatever you call him, a gentleman who wants to bring a restaurant there. But apparently now the guy is trying to seek uh, private financing, which um, that kind of concerns me a little bit. He doesn't want to go the uh, the old route with uh, you know an a banking institution or whatever. But um, so Mark, I did communicate with Mark here in the last week, and that's what he indicated what was going on. The guy still seems to be interested, but he's trying to secure his own private financing to uh, pull off the deal. So um, I'm not sure that's. It spells good things, um, but it's not as if the guy has said, um, forget it, I'm not doing it. So, so it could property? be a, possibly a, a third restaurant in uh, Ashford again. Is that whole property still for sale? It, you know, it's still for sale, but it, he took down the signs. I don't know why, um, you know, but I think um, obviously uh, Charter or Spectrum has got a, a big part of that building and um, you know, so that's that's what's been carrying him, and he, so I don't think he's, you know, obviously isn't um, at his wit's end about selling it. But um, well, I think the duplex is part of the property too, right? Yes, it is. The uh, I spoke with Gary Lawrence to try try to get information on the listing for some some of the properties uh, uh, in and around that area, 
uh, he, he was going to send me to the listings because he has several of them and we we're going to post them on the uh, the uh, commercial uh, Connecticut site that we subscribe to. Uh, but Gary had said something to the effect that uh, Chatter Spectrum had signed a five-year lease and the income from the five-year lease is enough to cover all the expenses of that building. So it doesn't really put a pressure on Pence to, you know, aggressively go out there and try to fill the rest of, of the building. But but he does want to sell it. I, I can tell you that he had some health issues here um, about a year and a half ago. And I think he wants to um, move on from the property. I mean, he, he, he really cares about Ashford. I mean, for a guy that doesn't live around this area, he's, he's been somewhat very passionate about Ashford, but uh, I think he wants to move on for it, from it if he can, but you're right. He, I mean, he's thankfully he's got that lease because um, if he didn't have that lease, um, I'm not sure where the property would be at this point. Yeah, but that lease is what also makes it saleable. <clears throat> True. But I mean, the, the guy, the guy that he was originally looking at, I mean, I, I think I sent you to all the link and um, I looked up the guy and the guy kind of was like, um, I'm not sure he's the kind of guy I'd want to do business with. Um, Mark indicated it was another gentleman from the Boston area. Um, so I don't know which guy is in the mix now, but um, it's a tough, you know, right now it's a tough market to, like, um, to be in the restaurant business, as we all know. I mean, so it's, you know, when you're trying to jump into it and start a new business in a new place, it's got the you know it's hard enough to be a, a business owner in the restaurant business as it is it's like a like one in five chance of succeeding and then when you throw COVID on top of that and all the restrictions and people's hesitancy um yeah i don't know <clears throat> you're playing a lottery for winning powerball maybe a better chance than restaurant business right now well and they're having a lot of problems getting people to work i was we went to uh, chang's garden the other night and uh, the only people that were there waiting on people were the owner and her brother and, she, and the cook. And wow. they were not able, and they had quite a few people there. Uh, the students are back, so she's got all of her Chinese students uh, frequent the place again. But uh, she can't hire anyone because no one wants to work. And, and you probably saw Cumberland's farm closed early on Sunday night because they didn't have any help. That's not the first time. Mm. Well, there so, is talk that the, uh, the, the, the Delta variant has been so aggressive that it actually may slow down any kind of a uh, um, an uptick later this fall that they were expecting. Yeah. We may have gotten some of it out of the way early, you know? Well, I, I've got my two Pfizer shots and uh, I've called down to Walgreens and Coventry and uh, they've got the uh, booster shot available, you know, if you qualify. So I plan to go down and get that. Who's that, Mike? It's me. Well, it's a better look for you, but who, who is the uh, who's it's the Tucker. interpreter? Who's the... It's Tucker? It's it's past his bedtime. <laughs> he's, he's a good looking one. He's gonna be he's gonna be one year old on Saturday, so yeah, I was gonna oh, say he's a puppy. He's a pandemic puppy. Yes, he is. <laughs> Spoiled so, rotten pandemic puppy. So, <laughs> So, Christina, zeroing back to you, okay, you've got enough ideas to uh, populate ideas for the website, uh, and you said there were some data that you had on the analytics for the website? Yeah, so I just um, emailed you guys a P couple PDFs. If you want, if you can look at those, I can just uh, give you a little explanation as to what you're looking at. Um, so there's one document that says uh, analytics all website data audience overview. So we started the analytics at the beginning of September, around September 3rd. Uh, so you don't have any data prior to that. Um, but this shows 
you the traffic pattern. If you're able to look at the, the, the document, you can see the peaks and valleys of when you got traffic. And um, so for this time period, September 3rd through September 21st, you've had 34 people visit the website. Um, and each person that came visited an average of uh, 1.3 pages. Um, so this information will be more useful over time as you collect more of it. Um, uh, so, but it's just since we just started, there's not a whole lot there. And then the next document says analytics, all website data channels. And this one's always interesting. You can see um, at the bottom, it says organic search, direct and social. And so what that's telling you is where the people that come to your website, where are they coming from? So organic search is people that are finding your website by typing uh, something into a search engine like Google or Bing. And so 22 people found your website since the beginning of September via search, which is actually, that's a pretty good number. I'm pretty impressed. It's that high already. And then direct traffic means people typed in ashfordedc.org, your, your, your URL. Um, so that's probably people like commission members that know that the website exists. Um, and then the third category listed is social. So that's people who find you, your website via social media like Facebook. So four people in the last uh, few weeks came to ashfordedc.org via a social media. So, and again, these numbers will become more interesting um, as it collects over time and you can start to see trends and what works and what doesn't work. And, oh gee, when we boosted a post, look, that social traffic went through the roof or, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I think the looking at the, the peaks around September 14th and 15th, I think that's when I did a boost on one of the posts. I've only boosted one of the posts. I haven't boosted all the posts. And I think I did a boost at that one, which uh, increased the traffic. I think that was for the Sean, uh, Sean Patrick post. Um, um, would that have been in September though? Well, I, I'm not sure which one it was, but that one peak that's more September 14th and 15th. Yeah, I would guess that you got I don't think you boosted a post in this time period because you can see the scale goes up to only 10. Yeah. And if you're going to boost a post, I bet you're going to convert a lot more than just eight people. Yeah. I was, um, I was looking at the effect of the boost when I was doing the RTC website because I was doing uh, campaign uh, ads for different candidates and then put a link for more detailed information on the candidates on the website. And I was getting hits in the order of, uh, I was spending like 25 bucks to do the boat boost. And I was getting hits in the order of 30 or 40 hits as the, as the click throughs on that. Right. Surpri surprised we didn't get more than that on these. Well, that's why I think, I don't think you boosted a post in September. So, okay, so this was probably in, in August when it was boosted. Right, but we don't have data for August because we yeah. didn't start the analytics until the beginning of September. Yeah. So the next time you boost a post, we'll be able to see what the impact was. Yeah, because because by and large, when it, doing the boost really uh, increased the traffic. Right. And um, I will say, so if, when, if and when you log into the back end of the website, that you can access the anal analytics from the back end. Um, it's there for you to look at. So, so just so you know, um, you know, it's not a separate account. I know we kind of went back and forth, Dick, about how to set it up, but um, so, but now you'll have access all in one place, which I think is convenient. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Let me look at my list here of what I did. 
We talked about Google Analytics. Oh, the new profile. That's what I wanted to mention. You had sent the new town profile from uh, whatever the new version of CERC Advanced CT. Um, and so I did update that. So if you go on the Ashford EDC website and you go, let me see which one it is. Yeah, if you are, if you go to facts about Ashford, which is on the main header, um, you'll see town profile 2021. You can download that PDF. And then I checked all the pages and made sure all the data was updated, um, et cetera. And then we put up, I put up the, that pamphlet about buying local that's under news on the website, EDC releases buy local brochure. And so people can download that brochure from the website. Um, you know, one question I had about the website and I can't believe I didn't notice this before, but if you're looking at the website on the header, it says grow Ashford business, plant your dollars locally, but it doesn't say Ashford Economic Development Commission across the top. Shouldn't it? It's uh, in terms of the meta tags, uh, I, I didn't do anything on that, but it should, should have something like Ashford uh, as the number one meta tag that Economic Development Commission is the number two, uh, not the, not the, uh, the slogan, uh, because I think if you were to uh, do a search on Ashford, right now you come up with the town website, but if you would come up with the uh, EDC website right behind that, you'd get more click-throughs on, on a, a Google search. Right, but I guess I'm just saying, like, if you if you're looking at the website right now, usually the name of the business or organization is in that what's called the header spot across the top, and it's right now the only thing there is this logo for Grow Ashford Business. If I don't know that this is for the Ashford Economic Development Commission, it might take me some time to figure out that's what this is. You, you, Do you know you what I'm should, saying? You should, you, you should be able to change that. Uh, well, yeah, in, I certainly can. I just didn't want to do it without. Yeah, uh, you know. yeah I, I would definitely change it to Ashford Economic Development Commission. Okay. And, and I would also, uh, in an area when you do the uh, Google searches, there are meta tags you can put up. And I would put Ashford as one meta tag and economic development is another meta tag. Um, that might even be the description. Yeah, right now it's just Economic Development Commission. Yeah, so I can update that. I'll make it more specific. But yeah, and I'll change the header so that it actually tells people what they're looking at. Uh, how are we doing on the CT visit, Christina? Hold on one second. Meta data. Okay. Um, CT visit. We did. Um, I reached out to several businesses to encourage them to sign up. I know for. I believe. Um, let me see. Uh, horse listeners definitely got back to me, and they said they were really interested in doing it, but I don't see that they did. Um, probably because it's their super busy season right now. Um, what, the, about, what about Marietta's? Uh, you mean Henrietta's, the bed yeah. and breakfast? They are already there. Yeah, they're there. Um, and then I did, I was able to add some shopping venues so hope and wellness is listed with a link to their website sean patrick plants is listed with a link ashford garden center um and i did there was an event in ashford this past weekend it was a craft fair at knowlton hall and i was able to reach out to the person organizing that 
I told her about this website. She got her event listed and it was featured on our page. Um, so, you know, it is possible for people to, to set it up <laughs> if they are motivated to do so. Did you talk to Deb Gag? Did she? Uh, been... Ashford Arts Council, I did reach out to them. I have not heard back. Yeah, uh, Deb Gag was the head of all that, but she's not, but she's still very actively promoting all of that. So she would be a good contact. Let me see, who did I send it to? And she's active on Facebook. Bob, Deb. Yes, I emailed her. I did not hear back. <laughs> she's also uh, chairman of the Garden Club. And, and she's also active on all of these artist collectives. And John, you're active in that too, aren't you? Uh, not really anymore, Dick. I've been too busy at my full-time job to <laughs> do all that other. Speaking of full, did, did all that stuff that we had get to the charity okay? Yes, actually I delivered, finally um, delivered it this weekend. Good. They're having the tag sale in um, on Columbus Day weekend. They did not have it last year because of COVID. So um, they're having it this year on Columbus Day. So yes, I actually brought it, finally brought it over this weekend. I'd be curious as how that all turns out. He gets a lot of stuff there. That's at Tri-County Greenhouses. Uh -huh. They have their annual uh, tag sale um, for, you know, it's nonprofit for people with developmental disabilities. So, um, so they have, and Dick had a bunch of stuff that I've been holding for a couple of years because I've never been able to get back to him and I just brought it over there. So, but yep, they, they were happy. I had my whole truck full. Good. So. So Christina. I have a question for Christina. If you, uh, if you get are successful this November and get elected, um, who would you recommend to kind of replace you for what you, what you've been doing for us on EDC? Cause I mean, you've done a great job. You've, You've kind of, you know, gotten us to a place where we haven't been in a long time. So if you have to uh, kind of resign your position with us in a sense, um, who would you recommend take over? Hmm. Who can do as at least half a good a job as you do? Well, you know, I'm irreplaceable, obviously, um, yeah. but we can't vote for you then. <laughs> That's I said, you know, you, you have to do what you have to do at the ballot box. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I'm not going to twist anybody's arm. Um, trying to think, you know, I'll think about it, Mike, if there's anybody, I mean, there's, there's no one that I know of who's like a mar marketing person, but there are probably people in town that are savvy when it comes to social media and probably websites, you know, um, so let me give it some thought and I'll, if I think of anybody, I'll let you know. You know Greg I mean, Robinson? Say that again. Greg Robinson. I don't know that person. Okay. Yeah, he used to do website stuff. I don't think he does it anymore. So he's yeah, a it, key guy. I think the key thing is uh I I, I can do WordPress stuff, but by the time I, I don't do it often enough, I've got to like relearn everything over again every time I do it. So it, it, it's inefficient for me to do it, which is why we never got this done. But I think finding someone that is familiar with WordPress and uh, working with the tools with the WordPress would be good. I, I know uh, at one point in time, we had some of the Verifil family helping with some stuff on the RTC site. I, I don't know if they're off doing it on their own, uh, nonpartisan. Yeah, I mean, I would just think, you know, as our, as, you know, younger people, I mean, a lot of, I mean, kids have to do this stuff for school now, right? If you're in high school or college, like you're building a website for a project, like I'm sure that's, that's an assignment. <laughs> um, so I would hope that a lot of people coming out of college or high school have these skills. Um, so it's, 
you know, so maybe finding a younger person, um, you know, might be, might be a way to go. Maybe my son, he's nine. If I give him a little <laughs> extra training. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it if you can find somebody. Yeah, I'll think about it. Or we should all sign a pack here not to vote for her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just don't discuss it when I'm here, you know. <laughs> hey, this is a public forum, so, you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Open government. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, Dick, I can give you another update. Um, well, not much of an update, but... Um, you know, I'd uh, had some conversations with our first select woman about the um, DOT and some of the things that they were looking to do on the corridor that we've been actively uh, pursuing for many years now. Um, and she was hoping to have a meeting with the uh, DOT probably like two weeks ago, and I, I never heard anything, so I'm assuming it did not happen. Um, we were actively trying to do some uh, speed improvements and uh, on the school zone for the Ashford School. Um, you know, we still have some opportunities with the Connecticut Transportation Institute to get some free um, speed radar signs there. Um, and I, I did had I did had received from um, the uh, traffic engineer of the head of traffic engineering division for DOT that they were going to um, um, get back to us on some of the other issues related to the RSA that we had conducted. Um, but I do believe that they kind of circled back with uh, Chris uh, with Catherine rather. Um, about their uh, one of their engineers to kind of talk about those things, but I'm not sure they connected. I can reach out to Catherine. I haven't heard back from her, but because um, she said she would contact me if there was going to be a meeting. Um, so we still got those things kind of hopefully still in the works, um, but I don't have an update. I would like to have seen some things transpire by now. I mean, there's some opportunities I think we still have to deal with the school zone, for instance, and I think there's still... <clears throat> some outstanding issues on the corridor there that can um, relate to the safety issues um, for speed and traffic that as we discussed the last time um, can maybe springboard us into some of the things that we had kind of as a long-term vision for the corridor. Um, but I think um, at this point, I don't have any further updates other than note to tell you that things kind of been uh, moving along slow, slowly. Um, and I'm hopeful that some things will happen here in the next month or two as well. So that's- You know, I, I, I think we've got, uh, <laughs> we, we got a, a mass confusion versus near-term versus long-term when we had the Board of Selectmen meeting on this. Uh, it should be a no-brainer. Uh, as I, I don't drive an awful lot around the state, but I noticed driving through school zones, most school zones have flashing yellow lights that come on and say 25 mile an hour when the school is letting out and, you know, there's students, you know, at risk. And it doesn't seem like it would be a big thing to do that on 89 around the Ashford school. I mean, it's just do the same thing that is done on numerous other state highways around the state. Um, the other thing is that uh, the sight lines on Cumberland Farms are absolutely horrendous. You cannot see that driveway when you're coming down the hill, going, uh, uh, get the right direction, going, uh, going west until you're on top of it. And there's a telephone pole there. There's a whole bunch of brush there. There's a couple signs there. And, and simply uh, changing that clutter that's in front of that uh, driveway would make a world of difference in terms of seeing people getting ready to turn into that. Uh, well, those are all things that are on the on the agenda, so to speak. Those are all things that have been transmitted to DOT. Um, I will tell you that there, it's the DOT is ready to, to deal with the issue on the school zones. It's just a matter of connecting with the town, I think, because I gave, I did forward to the first select woman the application that is required to do that. The DOT had done some um, investigation. They found that um, apparently there has not been a set uh, school zone speed set 
in that, that vicinity, which is kind of unusual. So typically what will happen is that it defaults to what the existing um, speed is for that section of 89, which is 45 miles an hour, which is kind of crazy. So um, there re remains an opportunity to reduce the speed. There remains an opportunity for the town. Unfortunately, the town would probably have to pay to put those speed radar signs up. They're done throughout the state. Through, many other towns have them, but those towns have actually paid to put those in place. It's just a matter of, again, with uh, the, these first selectman's office um, connecting with DOT, um, filling out the proper paperwork and, and having them sign off on it. Um, you know, the, I think the good news here is there's some really good people that have been now have been put into those positions at those um, at OSTA, which is the, uh, the the group, the department that kind of reviews those things for the Ashford Speed Zone. Um, the other issues. One thing I drove by the other day, just if you take drive by by the uh, between the church coming down towards Cumberland Farms, if you look up that that area, there's an awful lot of dead trees in that, that vicinity. I mean, that whole area could be clear cut, quite frankly, with all the vegetation, with all the trees, they're all dead. And you would have a clear vis visible view coming down 44 of that Cumberland's building from basically from the beginning of this, the, the upper church uh, driveway entrance, um, which would severely, or I should significantly improve the visibility and awareness of drivers in that, that area. So to me, it's doable. Um, it's just a matter of getting people together and, and doing it. I'm, you know, so we'll see. I, I remain hopeful. Yeah, well, Catherine was um, complaining. Man. She was <laughs> complaining that no one was putting forth any recommendations for spending some of this COVID release funds. Uh, one of the things that I would think would qualify for that is doing some of this uh, traffic signals a lot at Ashford School and along the other areas. That would uh, seem to fall in what's acceptable. And rather than putting solar panels on roofs of things. I will I will circle back with uh, Catherine and see where things are at. I, I did I did a few weeks ago and she was still in a holding pattern. But um, I mean, obviously things still remain crazy at DOT with COVID and everything else. So um, I will I'll, I'll get back to everybody on that. But I'll yeah, but I, I would specifically she was looking for suggestions of how the town should spend that money. And that would be a good way to spend it. Well, hopefully everybody responded to the survey that was in the Ashford. She, she said there was two or three respondents and I wasn't one of them. Um, wow. That's it. Only, I mean, I did, I responded. Um, but that's, that's too bad. It just asked for an email, right? Send an email. Right. Yes. They, uh, unfortunately yeah. they, didn't, they didn't do like a survey monkey. Yeah. Anything. They didn't do a real survey. So that's why they didn't get a response. No. <laughs> well, they're they're trying. I think they're trying to build up their technology, but um, you know, unfortunately, it's uh, it is what it is. Yeah, but that's I went to like give them feedback, but the way they worded it, I was like, I don't even know how to form a cogent sentence. It just I was like, this is crazy, and I'm a really smart person, and I can't figure out how to give you feedback. So, what are the average people doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay guys any other uh, momentous things that we can share with each other we won our golf league tonight oh nice <laughs> congratulations yeah no <laughs> How many people were in the league, Mike? Too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so John, you've got an eight thirty tonight, and are you taking out your lovely wife someplace? Or? No, 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 no. My daughter is here, um, and we're having dinner. Ah, sounds good. She's yep. in from where? No, they're just visiting uh, from Stafford Springs. Oh. So. You know, it's nice to see them once in a while. I thought I was going to be at the damn Red Sox game, which I'm so happy I'm not. So I'm going to have some dinner with them in a few minutes. That's all. Kind of, kind of, uh, kind of cold up there tonight. I think it's going to be rainy too. But uh, last night it was uh, a 
time. It was more of a playoff uh, environment with the Mets, all those Mets fans in town. It was a lot of fun if you watch the game. Anyway, folks, uh, good seeing you all. Dick, if, if I don't see you or talk to you before your surgery, you're going to be around for the next meeting. Or you're going to have your surgery at that point. I'll, I'll be at the next RTC meeting. I'm going to try to go to that. Uh, biggest thing is we've got to do is uh, get, get someone that can pinch it for me because I'm going to be out of pocket for a while. Yeah, I saw Jerry's note. So it's a. Uh, it, it's it's more than just a a, a maybe thing because uh, frankly if someone doesn't step up uh, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Hopefully we have some accountants. Okay, well okay. Hey, everybody keeps smiling. <laughs> Devil is that. Okay, you take care. Good night. Bye. Good night, Good night guys. Bye. But this was, by the way, this was a non-quorum meeting, so there won't be any minutes. So, say okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yes. Yep.
Mm -hmm. Oh, that was, that was charging. Yeah.
I figured they could suck you, suck with you into some too. Right, Kelly? He's the worst one. He's the leader of the pack. I know. He's purrs when I give him stuff. I just gave him some. I know. I was just saying. I 